Some things I want to say before this video starts. You will see me handle him with a, with like a rag to stop him from trying to lunge and bite me. Uh, you'll see me kind of dump him in later in the video. Uh, what, I, what I'm trying to say is you'll see me handling him a bit different than I do with all my other snakes. He's got a respiratory infection right now that I need to get it taken care of. He's also going in the shed. There's a bunch of factors that are going to make him hostile. And as you'll see, he definitely tried to nip me. He did smack my finger or my hand, but I had that rag over it and my gloves on, so he couldn't actually get through, which I wasn't really worried about. But point is, is he's more defensive right now. So I just want him to relax in his new environment, considering the fact that my craziest snake I have is Mimic. And you guys saw me tailing him with a hook. That snake, he likes to just bite, 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 bite. This guy really doesn't. He, I think he nipped at me like twice, maybe three times during the whole process. And once he realized that the, the bite wasn't scaring me away, he then turned and tried to run. That's what most snakes do anyways. All right guys, so apparently I can't leave this poor green tree python alone. <laughs> As you guys saw last week, I changed up his cage, I added this perch, and then I had mentioned that I was going to eventually get him a bigger cage down the road. And uh, then like a week later, I decided, you know what? I need to get him in something bigger. So I have it over here, you can't see it right now. Yeah, so I gotta get him out, put him back in this bucket. So I gotta get Shenron out, put him in this bucket, trap him in here, because I have to get everything out of his tank clean this completely out and then i'm going to put him into the new one yeah last week's video was completely pointless i did all that for nothing plus he didn't even get on the perch for some reason i believe it's the size of the tank uh it's just too small for him he's getting too big which can cause all sorts of issues spinal issues uh it can mess up his tail which his tail is really important because that's how they lure in food they have a darker tail they wiggle like a worm a lot of a lot of snakes do this snapping turtles do this or alligator snapping turtles do this they have a tongue like a little thing on their tongue it's like a worm anyways so yeah they use that to lure and prey and then they grab them so yeah smaller tanks like this can create a lot of issues he's also going into shed so he's not as vibrant this can cause a little bit more stress on him but luckily he hasn't got what we call blue caps yet so he can still see so some more fun stuff I found out about this guy. Yeah, so I got I got a hold of the original person who sells all sorts of cool stuff. I was looking through their page. The person that I got this before, it's who they, the vendor they bought it from, from an expo. I asked them, I was like, hey, I got a green tree python. They said that they got them from you. You know, do you have any more information, blah, blah, blah. Long story short is I found out that this guy is wild caught. He's wild caught, so he's not as easy to get accustomed to being held and handled. It's just something that's going to take time with him. Uh, also, I might have to go take him to a vet and get him checked for like parasites and such. But the people that had him before had him for like two or three years. So I, I think he's fine. But it's just more stuff I got to do with this poor dude. But whatever I got to do to get him right. So, all right, let's get in here and get him out. It's crazy is I'm in here for a wild caught snake. I'm messing with all his stuff and he's totally calm. He doesn't care. Put him out of the way. Put him out of the way. Um, she fell. Oh, buddy, you have a serious, serious respiratory infection. We really gotta get you into the vet, don't we? Uh, I think I'm just gonna do the cloth method. I'm just gonna go in there and throw a cloth over his head and grab them with the cloth and just move them. Come here, come here. Relax, relax, relax. Gotcha. Nope. Get in there. Once I had actually grabbed him, like completely went in there and grabbed him, as you saw, he didn't even try to bite. He just tried to flee. So I got him in here. I feel really bad. I can hear him breathing. Like I know he was hissing a bit. He just, he, I think he has a respiratory infection because the way it was like really with that high sounding wheeze, uh, which isn't normal. So he might have a respiratory infection, which is very common with this snake specifically. I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna work or not. I'm just kind of figuring this out as I go. 
All right. Oh, wow. That looks awesome. Oh, wow. Super excited. All right, so here's his new enclosure. It's two by two by two. It's a perfect cube. Well, it's not really a perfect cube, but it's a cube. I made the whole thing out of plywood, coated the entire inside with a rubber waterproof lining so that way there's no molding or, you know, drying out the wood, nothing like that. Then I attached a 10 gallon lid to the top. That way he has airflow and heat can get in there. Plexiglass lid and just folds down like this. I have removable perches that just come right out in case I ever got to get him out again and he's on a perch. I got a, another one under here where you can bask in the heat. I went to Home Depot and thought of the whole thing in like an hour, designed the whole thing in like an hour. It's all black and since he's Shenron, I'm going to Dragon Ball Z theme this whole thing so it won't stay just black for long. Once I get him in there and he's settled down, I'm going to start adding all sorts of cool stuff to make it Dragon Ball themed. So. All right, so now I'm going to put in all the stuff that was in his original uh, habitat. Now, I'm not a super big fan of these little rinky-dink cheap thermometer humidity things. They're not the most accurate thing. They could be off by like 5 or 10 degrees, and the humidity can be off too. It's all I got, so it'll do the job for now. Eventually, I'm going to switch over everything to electronic. Cool, so I got his cage and everything set up, ready to go. Now let's just put him back in there. Nope, nope, nope. Mm -mm. Nope, get in there. All right. That was not the smartest thing in the world, but it did the job. Dude almost got away, but I grabbed him. <laughs> Which, that's a prime example of, do snakes want to bite? No. They want to go away. They don't want to be bothered. I don't know if he bit me. Which I don't think he did, or if I cut my hand on something. Did you bite me? Did you bite me? If you did, I didn't feel it. So... I'll give you credit. Uh, you got some extremely sharp teeth if you bit me because I didn't feel it. I got to clean all this substrate up off the ground that I dropped and everything off of this. So since I believe he has a respiratory infection, that can actually transfer to my other reptiles. So I need to get all that out. I just need to leave him in there, basically quarantine him. And I got to get a hold of a vet, try and get him some antibiotics, which will be fun because I'm going to have to... Uh, mouth feed that into him and as you guys can see he's not the easiest snake to handle <clears throat> let's talk about what it takes to actually own which i don't really own compared to a lot of people i don't own that many reptiles i only got what four snakes and a chameleon whatever i end up filling into this tank it takes a lot of patience especially whenever you've got two snakes that don't like to be handled at all you know they like to bite and run and flee and they don't like humans <laughs> The other two, you know, it doesn't really take as much patience. They're real cool, calm, they're collective, you can hang out with them. But it takes a lot of patience and you got to do your research. You got to know what you're doing. You know, you can't just go blindly buy it, but then you're asking for a whole load of problems, which is kind of what I'm going through right now with the new guy with Shenron. But it's okay because I will have that taken care of soon. And I also kind of did that with the chameleon too. Kind of just jumped in, was like, yeah, I'll take her. Not gonna say no to a free chameleon, you know? So my, my main focus right now has really just been Shinron, just making sure that he's okay because now that I know he was wild caught, even though I believe he was wild caught when he was really, really young, because he's still got quite a bit of yellow on him that has yet to go away. And that takes about three years. So they had to have gotten him when he was pretty young. But my main focus is just making sure he's going to thrive in a captive environment. It's not like I can just get on a plane, go to Australia, and just put him back in the jungle. <laughs> That's not how it works. Especially with him being in human captivity for so long, that would just end up bad for him. He'd end up dying. 
He is now my responsibility, which is awesome. I'm super happy that I got him, but yeah, it's definitely patience for sure. It's definitely a process and a lot of learning. And I've learned so much in the past couple months alone, just the last couple weeks, the amount of books that I've been reading. I have like stacks of books and that's not even including all the studies and stuff that I read online, the forums, you know, I have a ton of Facebook groups and stuff that I'm in. I just am always reading and learning and you know, and I might do something wrong. There might be other owners that see something I'm doing and think, well, you know, he can't be in this or whatever. It's, you know, he's neglecting, that's not true. I spend so much time trying to learn about these animals and make sure that they're, everything's perfect that I always think I'm doing it wrong. I, I, at all times, I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna die. They're gonna die, I'm a messing this up. That's what I think all the time because I'm like trying to get it perfect, which, uh, which is good. I'm gonna make sure that they all thrive. All right, so for the last thing, I like to do this. You'll look around in all my tanks and you'll see it. Chaos with the female logo and Conquest down here. I know you probably can't see it, you can't see it. But uh, everyone has their name with a sticker. It gives a little bit of information about them. I don't have any Venomous, but if I did, you know, it would say Venomous and the name and the scientific name, all that stuff. Uh, but for these guys, since they're all just, look at them. I already exploring, having fun. Since none of them are venomous or nothing, I like to put their name, uh, not their scientific name or nothing, just the name that I named them. So his will say Shinron. It'll have a male symbol on it. And then since he bites, I put I bite. So that way no one comes in here and sticks their hand in there. And yeah, so the ones that bite, it says I bite on there. Go ahead and stick this right here. But yeah, there's some more stuff I wanna do for this channel. I wanna get some interior cameras. I can get some nighttime footage of these guys. They are super active at night. They are nocturnal. Everything in here I have is nocturnal except for my chameleon. So I definitely want to get some cool cube cameras I could stick in the corners of their enclosures and get some cool nighttime footage for you guys. There's a lot of stuff I, I plan to do with this channel and it's still early on. I treat it as if there's a lot of people watching like on my first channel. I treat it as the same exact way. I actually have been doing a lot more for this channel, trying to get this one caught up. But yeah, this one's just a bit easier to film for. I don't need someone there to film. I could just come in here and do stuff, do videos, but, but all right guys, we're done.